I don't know if you've seen this, Eku, but th this uh, this uh, this thing has kind of emerged that Eku Leota looks like an absolute unit out there. I mean, you <laughs> put on a ton of weight from this time a year ago. What mm -hmm. all is going on to that? And do you think it's fair that out there you look like an absolute unit? Man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you for saying that. But <laughs> Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm. I'm I'm freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackery. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Special show today will be joined by stud, edge rusher, whatever you want to call it, absolute unit, Ekuliota, and then... For our final few minutes, Charlie Five and I will break down everything that we that he said and kind of give you our biggest takeaways. We're now joined by Auburn defensive end Eku Leota. Man, it, how's spring going so far? Nothing but good reports coming out of spring practice. Man, spring's been going great. Um, just uh, learning um, Jeff Smetting, Coach Smetting's new uh, philosophy and stuff, and. You know, just seeing everybody um, come together. Uh, and yeah, I don't know, like all the drama in the offseason, I feel like it's brought us together more. Um, and I feel like we've, been, we've never been like this kind of disciplined before. Like, I, I don't know, I just feel something like different about this team. And like, we're, we're going good, a good way. So we've come yeah. a long way too. So. And, and there's been other players, Eku, that have said, similar things that the mm -hmm. all, all the outside stuff kind of brought you guys together. Yeah. What were some of the conversations like that you had with, with teammates while all of the, uh, the off season drama was going on? Yeah, just, um, a lot of it was just how we can lead the team and how, how we can like, uh, I guess, uh, keep, keep working through all the, 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 yeah. the stuff that we're going through and, um, I guess just like finding the leaders on the team because it, it, there's a lot of new faces on there too, um, and we are short in the depth somewhat, but we're 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 really this really helps us bond and just know that like we really have to lock it in and we we all have to um, um, put in um, and help out, sure. especially uh, um, in our position. Edge is me, Dr. Dylan Brooks, and Hayden. Which is this is not much depth at that position, but we're, we're making do with what we have. So what we have is what you know all we need. So I feel like, sure. but yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned spending time learning. You know, a, a new defense coach Schmetting got promoted to to defensive coordinator. There, there's been a lot of assumptions though, Eku, kind of from the outside looking in, that it's going to be a pretty similar defense from what you guys did under coach Mason last year. Is that true or, or will there be some differences? Yeah, no, it's, it's the same defense, but uh, coach Schmetting has his own wording of different um, things that we see on the field. And it's just coach Schmetting's language. And Got it. We, we all have to really understand like um, with, with all the new play and not really not new plays, but just new terminology that we have to get down. And I, I, I like it. For sure, and it's, it's it's nothing that we haven't seen before. But yeah. it's just we we're still trying to get that new terminology down. And I think I think we're doing a pretty good job. So sure, um, I'm really excited for how the, where this defense is going for sure. So this is your first spring on the plane, yeah. right? Because because last year you announced that you were transferring to yeah. Auburn, but you were not here this time a year ago. Yeah, I, w I was I was finishing up my degree at Northwestern and. I had to be up there, but man, I wish I would have had a spring last year. I feel like um, I would have been a lot more aware of the the playbook and stuff for when the season came around. But you know, it's that I, I like the spring here a lot. You know, it's not hot. You know, it's not 100 degrees sure. in the fuck head. But uh, right. So, but you know, it's, I, I love it. So well, good, good, and. I imagine that's a big deal as far as prepping for the season because what around halfway through the year is really when it seemed like you were kind of, you know, 
turning it on a, a little bit. And I mean, I'm sure yeah. just comfortable in the new system and a new place. You move to a different part of the country. I mean, there's so many different things that, that go on into all of this, but For you sure. don't have to worry about that this year. You could start day exactly. one kind of being ready to pop off. Yeah. Coming in, I came in last uh, July and it was, I only had uh, like four weeks to get acclimated, but it, really the confidence comes with the reps and that's really what I was missing. Uh, like, I guess, um, coming in because reps is really how you know the defense right. and stuff. And I really didn't get as much as I wanted throughout fall camp, I guess. But, um, the spring has really helped me gain more confidence and better technique and stuff throughout the, uh, throughout this spring. So I'm, I'm really excited. for, for Sure. This year, so, yeah. Sure. All right, we continue this conversation with Eku Leota in just a moment. Look, we're all frustrated with March Madness. Um, all the blue bloods, but the way you can truly win throughout March Madness is with our friends at Stat Hero. They're NCAA single game pickums. They pit the star players against each other. And look, if you know your stuff, you'll win money. That's the way Stat Hero works. It's the easiest and fastest way to get your sports action fixed. The simple sleek gameplay will have you playing in minutes, and that is not an exaggeration. It's what daily fantasy is meant to be. So you can sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on and use promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That is stathero.com slash locked on. Use promo code locked on. Terms and conditions apply. So all of the videos that have popped up, and I mean, you and, and Derek Call, and I'll, I'll even put Dylan Brooks in this. I mean, you guys look the part. I mean, it's just as far as SEC edge rushers, you guys absolutely look the part. And I don't know if you've seen this, Eku, but th this uh, this uh, this thing has kind of emerged that Eku Leota looks like an absolute unit out there. I mean, you <laughs> put on a ton of weight from this time a year ago. What mm -hmm. all is going on to that? And do you think it's fair that out there you look like an absolute unit? Man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you for saying that, but... <laughs> I, I got to give credit to Coach Pittman, our yeah. strength coach, on that one. Um, I mean, I I was put on weight weight gain when I first got here, and now it's now it's starting to pay off a little bit, I guess. <laughs> sure. But coach Pitt, Coach Pittman's uh, off season um, training has has really helped me uh, become the unit that everyone's talking about. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Ab absolute unit is what we're going yeah. with here. But the, <laughs> the you know the the idea of having you on one side. And, and Derek Hall on the other side, especially in a third and long situation, that has to be something that you guys are talking about and, you know, being strategic on as far as getting after opposing quarterbacks right now. For sure. I'm really excited to have Derek Hall on the other side just because we, we really know how to communicate with each other. We understand each other and we, we understand the game a lot. Um, it's just nice to have another veteran guy on the other side just – you can't always see what's on the other side and the communication is so, is so important on the defense. And I, I just know B Hall has my back on the other side. So we're, we're going to get after the quarterback this year. So I'm well, excited. About it. What about Dylan Brooks? I mean, didn't see much of him last year as he redshirted, but I mean, physically, I mean, it looks like he's yeah. developed too. What have we seen from him so far in spring practice? Yeah. Uh, D Brooks has come a long way for sure. Um, He's he he looks he's 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 gonna he's gonna really help us out this year. Um, we all have high expectations for him, and man, he's he's starting to come together. Uh, I, he's he's using his hands a lot better. He's he's rushing the quarterback a lot better, and I, I can see his confidence just coming in um, a lot more. Just just with the reps he's getting, and he's he's constantly asking questions, asking to go through the playbook. Yeah. So he's he's. He's um, he's got the right head on on his shoulders, so sure. I'm excited for D for D Brooks. So. Sure, yeah. Eku coming down here and you know with, with the new NIL rules and all that, you guys can can finally get some money, which is well deserved, yeah. and I'm happy for all of you guys. NIL Auburn seems to be ahead of the game and all this with with fan interaction, getting the fans involved as well as businesses. How has NIL Auburn kind of helped? Auburn take that next step forward as a program from, from your eyes as a player? Man, I, I didn't really 
hear about NIL Auburn until January. Okay. But just just knowing about all the different um, benefits that it has for the student athletes here, um, they're just trying to bring all the student athletes together and um, really help them get the deals that they deserve and um, and really just help them financially. You know, um, it's it's been really nice having you know a little extra money in my pocket for sure, sure. <laughs> and just. Um, yeah, and this has also been helping my family out for sure, you know, and the, I, this goes to say for like many other athletes too, yeah. but, um, I feel like, and I, and I, Auburn has been so good to us and I'm, I'm really excited for where it's going. Um, I just wish that I started, uh, with all this NIL as, as a freshman, you know, yeah, right. I'm a fifth year this time, but I'm excited for, um, where Auburn State, NIL Auburn is going to be um, for the years to come, for sure. Yeah, yeah, NIL Auburn, they are leading the way and, and getting Auburn fans involved. And if, if you're an Auburn fan and you want to help um, both current players and future players financially and, you know, make Auburn the most attractive place, even more attractive than it already is for, for incoming players and current players, of course, go to NILauburn.com to see how you can get involved. Eku, yeah. you know, we mentioned we mentioned D Brooks just for a second, but who are some other guys throughout spring practice that have kind of stood out to you? Um, Cam Riley. Cam Riley's have had a really good. That spring. guy's huge, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for Cam Riley, especially with the um, Zacoby gone. Where there's gonna yeah. be some uh, head to, uh, to fill there, but. Uh, I'm excited for Cam. Um, DJ James has looked really good out there, the uh, transfer corner. Yeah, from um, Oregon, right? Yeah, yes. And then we got Jason Jones, a transfer as well from Oregon, and he's he's been looking good. Our, our front, our trenches are going to be solid this year. We got we got some Marcus Colby, of course, but that's um. Uh, who else has looked really good out there? I I think Marcus can really um. I think this is the year where he takes a huge step forward. In my for opinion. sure, yeah, for sure. I'm I'm excited for him. He's he's very twitchy off the line. Um, Kobe, man, you already know what's gonna happen with Kobe. Right. He's a big body, but but when a guy uh, like Kobe says he's coming back, um, what does that do? I mean, the the fact that you and Derek Hall and Kobe, uh, all of you guys coming back. What what does that do? What does that do to a, a position room or or, or you know a, yeah. a defensive meeting room where where all of you guys are looking around? It's like we probably could have gone on and gotten drafted, but yeah. we chose to stay here to to do so. What does that mean? What, what what does that mean amongst all of you guys? I feel like it not only gives us more motivation, but it gives us more momentum. Just knowing that all you know all these veteran guys are coming back. Um, we know like, oh yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna give uh, offenses some problems this year. And and just cause we've worked together for, for, for a good amount of time now and we're starting to build that chemistry. So um, yeah, we're, this, this defense this year, I feel like is, is gonna be solid. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Right, no, I, I think you should be. I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be fun. Eku, thank you so much for your time. I know you're extremely busy with, with spring practice going on. So thank you for giving us uh, a few minutes and uh, best of luck moving forward. Yes, everything, man. Thank you for having me, Zach. Thank you. Thank you so much to Ecoliota for stopping by Charlie five. And I will break down his conversation in just a moment. Look, bet online is the place to wager on all of your sports betting. And of course they also have reality TV shows. And after months of playing college basketball is determined uh, the top teams for the final four. And obviously with the national championship, that's a big deal. But like I said, you can you can gamble now on reality shows. And speaking of what happened over the weekend at the Oscars, there's a line now at Bet Online where if a boxing match were to happen between Chris Rock and Will Smith, they have lines for it. And they have Will Smith minus three thousand to Chris Rock's plus nine hundred. That seems like easy money to me. I'm just saying, it seems like easy money to me. Go over to Bet Online to check out where everything happens. That is Bet Online, where the game starts. Charlie Five joining us. What were your biggest takeaways 
from the conversation with Eku Leota? Uh, I, I don't believe I've ever heard anybody say this, but that dude is just an absolute unit. I think he it's is. really important that we drive that point home. He Absolutely. is. A, he and is he's a cool with it. He's a monster of a man. He enjoys that that moniker, so we're going to make it a thing. Um, <clears throat> first off, uh, I love the the talk of the team sort of vibing together after the controversy in the offseason. Right. Uh, we said that things could go one or two ways. Hopefully uh, what he said is correct, and it's going you know the way that everybody sort of unites and, and sort of gets on the same page. So that was yeah. exciting. One thing, I don't, I'm not sure that if, if anybody – may have taken away this the way I did because I'm like I, I'm always looking for the the little bitty nugget that may mean more than it actually means but I mean, he's he mentioned they're learning new terminology with uh Jeff yeah Murray. okay so remember there was a little rumor going around uh in the iron bowl you remember this uh that wasn't Derek Mason that called that that game it was it was Jeff Schmetting well yeah Seems seems like the the terminology, like having to learn new terminology and whatnot, would sort of put that put that message to bed. Uh, I don't want to harp too much on past coaches, but that I, I, sure. I that sort of jumped out at me. Uh, if we're learning new terminology, it pro that probably sort of that may put that that rumor sort of to rest. Uh, and then, so, so it, go ahead. While, while we're saying that, before you move to to your next thing, something I've always been told is when new coaches come into a system. They adapt to what the players already know. I've never heard it the other way around. I've always heard new DCs come in and they adapt yeah. their terminology to what the players already know. Yeah. And so I, I thought that was odd. I thought that was odd that the terminology for the defensive coordinator last year and the linebackers coach is different. I would yeah. think that Schmetting and Harson would have the same terminology and then Mason would have to adapt to that. That yeah. that that's that was odd to me for I didn't even think about, you know, the Iron Bowl rumors where, you know, who was calling the plays there. But um, that stood out to me for that. It's like, why is Schmetting? I feel like Schmetting should just kind of, he's the coach. I feel like he should just kind of bolt to what the players are already doing. That That's that's the way I took that. Yeah. So, term, I mean, uh, I, you're right. You're right. I think I think you're dead on there. Uh, that that part just kind of jumped out to me. Um, yeah, sure. We're, we're sort of, it's it's maybe not as close of a same system as, as we're, is we're either led to believe or we're told uh, it's going to be it is it isn't going to be a new defense. It is going to be Jeff Schmetting's defense because heck, his his play names are being put in. He's he's going to call it the way he wants to call it. Name it the things he's going to name it. Uh, that's that's good stuff. And then the big one. Yes. You know where I'm going with this? I assume you're going nil with it. No, not nil. We'll go there. Oh, but okay. Cam Riley was one of the guys. He said it instantly. That was the first name he said. He was like, Cam, Cam Riley. Riley. Yep. Let's go. 6'5", 230. I'm going to say it every time I say his name. Please do. I think it's actually legally part of his name at this point. Just put him on the field. It doesn't matter where. Put him on the field. Echo sees it. He know, One unit knows another unit when he sees it. Well, he was talking about you know how thin they were at, the, uh, at that position. And yeah. I was kind of hoping – They'd be like, you know, we see Cam Riley there every now and then. I was hoping he was saying that. I was like, oh, yeah. ooh, let's go. But, yeah, we didn't get that. He we didn't. Didn't get that. But, but he did say he's a stud. Yes. So the NIL stuff was uh, – that that was great. It was good to hear the positive things uh, that he was saying. Um, he was here a while. He was here a while before he knew about it. So that's all <laughs> – I don't want to read too much into that. But uh, and I don't exactly know whose job that is. Like yeah. someone dropped the ball there. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that. I don't think nil can like. I don't think they can initiate conversations. Yeah, like can can they pursue players that are not signed with them? Like I, I don't know. I don't know the rules on that. I don't think they can. I don't. I don't think they. I, I don't think legally they they can initiate a conversation. I, I don't know that for a fact. There may be some wiggle room there, but I'm pretty sure that it has to be sort of like. Uh, they can market it. They can market that we're here, but it's it's kind of like if Publix had a job opening, they can't go knock on doors. And Which say, I'm sure they do right now, by the way. Yeah, yeah. They, they can't go knock on doors and say, "Hey, you got a 16 year old. Um, we'd love to offer him a job." I don't think they can do like that, but I think they can say, "Hey, we're hiring. We're out here. We're open. Uh, we're doing things. We got yeah. these players signed up." And then the conversation is initiated on the on the other end. But yeah, somebody dropped. 
somebody dropped the ball for him to be here from July. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, that's what, six months before he, he knows about, uh, and how to, how he can, you know, like he said, uh, put a little money in his pocket, help his family. Saying, there was, like people were taking care of their families and stuff through it. I'm like, that's awesome. Yes. That's, that's absolutely awesome. That's life-changing a, lot of, stuff. a lot of those guys and, and you're, not every kid that comes to college is going to play in the NFL. And a right. lot of times their marketability is, can be no higher than when they're wearing that Auburn uniform. Mm-hmm. People want to be friends with football players. People want to use them to help put, sell their products because it's just a, it's just a, it's what well, that's the way it's always been. That's right. the way it's always been. So I love that we're maximizing that and giving kids the opportunity to maximize their current marketability. It, as, as far as they can possibly go. Yeah, and if you want to be a part of that, once again, I said it in the interview, but nilauburn.com, fans can get engaged and, and really help Auburn become even more attractive of a place to play, even more than it already is. Yes. One other thing that, that I want to touch on, I already, I, you know, I hit on it lightly when we were talking about the Cam Riley thing, but the, you know, the, the edge rusher position being thin, I mean, it really seems like it's, it's Eku, Derek Hall and then D Brooks. That's it, yeah. Um, and there's another one, but I just don't really see if he's gonna play. I, I forget his name. I could be wrong. Maybe he will play. But you know, he said it, and then Harson said it. I believe he said it after the scrimmage is when he said it, but he said it recently as well. And I just wonder if that's whenever like players say something and then a coach also says it in like a you know close to the same time, I just kind of assume they're talking about it. And so I, I just wonder what that conversation is like in the position group where it's like, yep, we're thin right now. Not a lot of depth, but, you know, top heavy. It's great. You think that's a marketing pitch? Yeah, absolutely. To the, uh, to the old portal there? That's the old marketing pitch to the portal or to the... I think so because, I mean, just just looking from the out, you know, outside looking in, if I'm an edge player and I see that, it's like, no way. There's no way I'm going to play. But three edge guys, four edge guys will play in a season. And if you yeah. know, you've got, you know, a lot of these portal guys, they've got three or four years of eligibility left with the COVID yeah. year. If they were like a, you know, a true freshman during COVID. So Eric Hall is gone. Eku probably is going to, ba- is probably going to work his way into a draft pick this year. So because he's uh, an absolute unit, because he's an absolute unit. I mean, he, uh, he may have led the team in sacks last year. I'm not, he had a, he had a pile of sacks last year. Uh, I think Derek did. But Derek did okay, yeah. So. You, you got those two guys leaving. I mean, who's going to play after that? It's got to be attractive. It's got to be attractive, and um, you're probably going to get on the field this year a good bit. So yeah, and, and I yeah. thought that's some of what Eugene Asante was going to do, but it doesn't sound like that's happening. But when, no. when that news broke, it's like okay, he's committing to Auburn. I thought he was going to kind of be some of that outside role, but I don't think he's getting reps there. So no, I think he's going to be strictly inside. It seems. Yep. Yep. But yeah, we got some. Not, we got really good options, just not a, not a ton of them. No, uh, I mean, God glad one of, one something of happened to one of them, and it's just like, what happens to the rotation there? It just goes yeah. away. So, I'm glad Eku's one of them, though. I love he's him. Stud. I he's love stud. him. He's a he's a unit. He's an absolute unit. Yep. Um. Cool. Charlie Five. How can people find you? Hear you? Support you? All that. Yeah. Good I mean, stuff. find me on Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore Five AuburnLive dot com. The corner message board. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on the Dad Bod Golf Pod. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. Go. Follow me on Twitter at Z Blackerby. The show on Twitter at Locked On Auburn on Instagram at Auburn Podcast. We're also on TikTok if that's your thing. But if you're watching on YouTube, please like the video and please subscribe. We're trying to get to 5K within the next few weeks. That'd be really, really cool. We appreciate the help with that moving forward. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked On Auburn.